The very first thing we need to do is to drive the old handle out. So I've got a piece of oak dowel here, and we'll see how hard it's going to take to get this out. Not very hard. It's not an easy decision for me to determine the length of this handle. I keep thinking I want it longer. I like longer axes, but then I keep, you know, David said it's a pocket axe. He kept using the word pocket axe, and this starts becoming not a pocket axe. 12 inches overall was mentioned. Here we go, 12 inches overall. That to me seems really short, too short. I'm thinking 16, David wants 12, so what that tells me, 14. 14 overall is our compromise. Right there, that's 14. That is starting to look, yeah, that's, that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be 14, David. Upon reflection, I'm not satisfied with this piece I had selected. You can see right here is the green orientation, which is quite good, probably never a problem, but could it be better? Yeah. So I went through and I hand selected uh, the best piece that I have, which is right here. You can see the green orientation. So we'll be taking the X handle for the Norland out of this section right there. Perfect grain orientation, nice tight knots. That is going to be that's going to be perfection right there. So the die is cast. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go two inches deep to accommodate the eye. Plenty of room for a nice Vons foot in the back and an inch and a half at the width. That'll give me plenty to work with and a nice shoulder for the axe to sit on. So I'm going to take this over to the table saw, uh, rip this down, and we'll get to work. There it is, gentlemen. 14, 14 and a quarter. A quarter for the top, a hangover in the eye there. That's what it's gonna be. See there, select. Nice grain orientation. Mm. Now for the shape. That's the hard part. So Dave and I both have large hands. And you know what they say about guys with large, large hands? They wear large gloves. So we'll have an inch and a half at the palm swell. That'll fit a, a big hand, just about perfect. So the layout is complete here. So to kind of show you what I've got, here's the Fawn's foot, a three inch taper here, and I mark everything on each side, and the vi lines are not to be violated. I'll stay outside of those on the bandsaw. So up here, we have the eye and the cutout here for the eye. You can see it's pretty narrow. 
So then it will cut out there. And then we have the actual axe, the bottom of the axe here, here, here. And the determining line of the shoulder. And that shoulder, that's a half inch there, will come up from this end and will taper in for that shoulder to sit, at, sit on. So it's nice and secure. And same here, a little less pronounced, but it will come up here and you can see these angles are the shoulder angles. So now I'll take and we'll cut all of these lines out with a bandsaw and then we'll start shaping and finish it up by hand. So there's the rough blank. Doesn't look like much, does it? But the bandsaw certainly saves a lot of work. So you can see there we've got our, right there, our shoulder. Open there for the eye. And then the start of our Fawn's foot there. And now the rest of it will all be shaped by hand. All right, I think it's just about done. Got to work on the base there. I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait to finish that until I seat it because I need a flat surface to pound on. But uh, boy, it's going to be beautiful. Let's see if it fits. Okay. Let's see. See how it goes. Ready, Jack? So the eye is so small, it doesn't want to take a wedge very well. So I'll take a clamp and bind that together and we'll recut this a little bit wider. All right, so I made a new wedge, a little bit less Less angle on it, a little bit thinner, and I think that is going to be ideal for our application here. All right, now's the time. This is a fiddly little delicate process. On this little axe. I'm liking that. Really liking this. We 
that goes all the way. That is really good. It's really tight. Really tight there. Oh no, there's gonna be a part three? Yep, part three. Part three will wrap it up. I've got it done, holding it right here in my hand, getting ready to save it up, ship it out to Dave. It's turned out very nice. Top left uh, is the first part of this, part one, a little bit of history in this ax, where it came from and why I'm doing it. To the right. Top right, one of my favorite videos. This is the video where someone once said to me, I wish my wife looked at me the way your wife looks at you. She looks at you like a tasty pork chop. And I thought that was pretty funny. Pork chop or something like that. Uh, bottom left is my 72 hour kit. Just some recommendations, um, not the definitive word on it, but just something to think about. It's nice that we can share those and help each other out, come up with things that work for us and for our families. And bottom right is restoring my Nana's, well, my Nana's mother's national canner that Mrs. Rangerstar uses. Bring it up to current standards using new gauge, um, a jiggle valve and making it safe. And that was really a fun project and is a, a family treasure. So again, thanks for watching and take a moment if you would and click the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on part three. Mm -hmm.